start get started. My guess is we'll have um, some other people join us. Is my video working or am I totally frozen? Uh, we don't, you're just a black screen right now, Kasha. Oh. Yeah, you're frozen for me. Okay, hold okay. on one second. Let's see about this. All right, I'm just going to stop my video now, unfortunately, um, and see if I can figure that out in a little bit. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, all right, it's 6.02. Now let's go ahead and get started with, first with commissioner introductions. Um, we'll take care of some business here, and then we'll get down to the dog situation, which is, I know, why everybody's here tonight. Um, my name is Kasha Ranjo, and I am chair of the Parks Commission. Uh, Stephanie. My name is Stephanie Hunt and I'm a Parks Commissioner. Lincoln. Lincoln Frasca, Parks Commissioner. Andrew. Andrew Brewer, Parks Commissioner. <clears throat> Emily. Hey, I'm Emily Donaldson. Uh, I'm a Parks Commissioner. Sorry, I'm making dinner for my children. So low pan parenting right now. So I'm just going to be listening for the first half an hour probably. Thanks. Um, sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, okay. And we've got Alec and Kara on staff. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. Um, oops, here we go. I'm Kara Barbero, and I am crew leader for the Parks and Trees Department. And actually, where is Alec? Are we missing you? Um, he should definitely be here. I talked to him recently and he's yeah. planning to be here. Um, okay, I don't have any text messages. We'll just assume he'll join in a second. Um, while um, he's waiting to join, let's uh, do the April 2nd agenda and March 12th minutes. Can I get a motion from a commissioner? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the March minutes as well as tonight's agenda. Second. I can second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And Alec has joined us. Perfect. All right, and now um, right on time, we're gonna go ahead and um, we always at the beginning of our meetings, for those of you who are joining us um, for if it's been a while um, or your first time, we always open for public comment on any um, thing that's not on the agenda. And so if you have comments about things that are not related to the dogs um, uh, kind of situation that we're all here to talk about and, and figure out tonight, um, does anybody have public comment they'd like to share? All righty. Hearing none, um, we will move along. Um, we generally have a staff update here at the beginning, but now that we've just approved our agenda, I'm thinking we can probably skip over that part unless you have um, something, Alec. Okay, great. Um, and um, let me see if I can turn my video on because I would prefer to... All right, can you guys... Can you see me now? Okay, great. Um, all right, so I think what we're gonna do tonight, um, I'm gonna open things up. Um, we'll turn, turn things over to um, what we affectionately call the dog committee, um, and then um, open for public comment, um, and then um, turn to staff to provide some feedback. And then uh, as commissioners, we'll have a bit of a discussion. Um, and so I just wanted to start by just kind of reminding all of us why we're here and what brings us here tonight. Um, and I think um, 
it's important to remember that we all love our parks. We especially love Hubbard. That's why we're here. Um, that's true for us as commissioners. It's why we're on the commission. It's true for people who walk their dogs. It's true for people who don't walk their dogs. Um, we all have a really special place in our hearts for our for Hubbard Park. Um, and we just may have different ideas of an ideal experience and different accommodations to enjoy these places or different roles that these parks play in our lives. Um, but I think for all of us, they're really central to our community. Um, and we maybe have like a favorite tree or a favorite mossy patch that we like to return to or leaves we like to watch change with the season or dogs we like to greet in the morning or people we like to greet um, as part of that community. Um, and so our community, it's a, it's a place that's part of our community, but also our people are part of our, our community. And our community is those people that are in the parks and also our people who are not in the parks and we're not seeing show up on a daily basis or not using these spaces. Um, and I think all of us probably know someone, a friend, a neighbor, a kid down the street, a grandparent, somebody who actually doesn't get to enjoy, enjoy Hubbard. And I don't know about you all, but that always makes me really feel sad that there's a place that I love so much and other people, you know, there are folks who feel like they they can't go there and, and don't have space for them. Um, and I think that's really the question that brings us here today is trying to figure out how we can hold that incredible community, the incredible space and, and everything that we love so dearly about this special place and how we can share that with um, our friends, our neighbors, and look out for more people in our community to make sure that um, our parks are welcoming and accessible to all people. Um, the kind of the path of what brought us here today in terms of process, um, going way back hundred years ago, plus years ago, Emily will like probably know the specific date because she's the historian among us, but, um, Hubbard Park was gifted to the city of Montpelier. It was, and pieces have been added on, but over the time, um, but there weren't necessarily like rules tied to the gift or how we're all supposed to behave and what we're supposed to do and how this place is. And, you know, you, I wasn't here in the eighties, probably some of you were, but from the stories that I've heard, um, there were, it was kind of a free for all in the parks. And it was like, you could ride your dirt bike around in the parks. You could be there whenever you want to be kind of do whatever you want to do. Um, and over the years, rules have been added. We don't see dirt bikes there anymore. And I don't know you all, but I'm really grateful for that. Um, and um, I think there's places, uh, um, there are things that weren't really, you know, decisions around let's how, how, here's how we should manage our parks. It just kind of grew up naturally. That's how our trail system grew up. That's how all the uses grew up. Um, and so when we think about dogs, there where that we know that there is, are different you know, sides in our community or different uses that people want to see in our parks. And addressing that, there was the canine code of conduct that came up several years ago. There was the city referendum that was on the ballot of several years ago um, that really came up with like a 50-50 split that was like a bunch of people want dogs on leash, a bunch of people want dogs off leash. Um, and we all know in that kind of situation, that leaves half people kind of not really happy about it. Um, and so this um, brings us to where we are now. We, as a commission, we just, we started creating management plans for our parks. Our parks didn't have management plans. Um, so we were looking at Hubbard and North Branch, not as like a dog specific thing or let's, you know, let's figure this out. We just started talking to our community members. We had led walks in the park. We had a survey that was taken by more than a thousand people. We had public meetings and said, hey, what do you, how do you feel about your parks? What do you want to see here? What do you like here? And um, what the conversations kept kind of circling back to um, this question of dogs and people loving, absolutely loving that community of, of dog owners and dog lovers and, and dog greeting happening. And also people saying, you know what, I don't really go there because I'm afraid of dogs or I had, you know, a, an issue with dogs. And um, 
I think it, it, you know, for all of us on the commission, looking at all this and having these conversations, it became clear that there are a lot of people who love the way it is now, but they're also clear that many of our friends and neighbors can't enjoy this special place. And so as a commission, just as part of the management plan, we started to pull together, not just for dogs, but for all the different things that we're, we were seeing in the parks, for trails, for um, our shelters, all these things, like how, how can we manage this place better? How can we make these places more welcoming for all people? And so we, uh, over a year ago now, had suggested a handful of steps um, that we thought would be sensible. Um, we suggested leashing in parking areas and roads and shelters. We talked about areas of the park. We talked about specific trails. Um, many of you showed up to the public meetings at that time and said, wait, 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 I don't like this idea. Um, I think there are other ways to do this. Let's find something, another path forward. And really as a commission, we wanted to turn and, and listen to our community and say, well, okay, if our idea is not the best idea, what are the other ideas out, out there? Like what, how could we bring everybody together? And so coming out of that process, what we, what, what we created was um, this dog committee to kind of look at the situation. And so um, the vision for this was ha to have four people on the committee, two people who are dog owners and enjoy walk walking their dogs off leash, two people are, who are not do dog owners and maybe don't come to the park or want a different type of experience. And um, our first, this was over a year ago, and when we went down this road, our first challenge was putting together that committee. So, and it took a while to do that. and. Ultimately, we did our darndest to reach out to people and kind of to hear multiple voices on the issue. And what we pulled together was four amazing people who have been working really hard on figuring this out, all four of which are dog owners. Um, and didn't did wasn't quite what you know we envisioned. Um, but it's created this space and this conversation, which was the important place, and trying to figure out like what do we need to learn from our community. How can we discuss this together and have a civil conversation and, and figure out a path forward? Um, and then just as this group was coming together, the flood happened, and then we kind of got everybody back together in the fall. Um, and um, one of the, we didn't really prescribe as a commission, like, here's how this needs to happen. It was kind of like, hey, go out and collect the and figure out what we need to know. And figure out the best ideas in the community and come back to us with recommendations. Um, and so the approach was um, a survey, which they'll share, um, and a recommendation. Um, and um, the survey really, I think some of you saw um, the results online, but really what we're seeing again is that kind of the same thing as the referendum, which is this 50-50 split of half our community loves having the off-leash situation half the community would prefer to have dogs leashed. And then there are some people who don't even come to the parks because they don't feel welcome and included there. Um, and so I think the pickle that we're all in and the situ you know, the question that we're all trying to find a really sensible answer for collectively tonight is um, how can we continue to make sure that Hubbard is this amazing special place that's central to our communities we love about living in this town and, and, and our lives and spaces, and how can we make sure that it's also a place that's more welcoming to our friends and neighbors. Um, and so um, I'll turn it over to the, uh, like I said, to the dog committee to kind of share some of the insights of their conversations and, and findings and things and re recommendations, hear from them, turn it all over to you for public comment. Um, and then we'll discuss um, this, a commission. Um, and I want to say to the to the four people who have really put a lot of time, like meeting multiple times a week, odd hours, um, to to make this all happen and and pull together these recommendations. Um, we're really grateful for your work. The survey that you put out, I think, it's helpful to just engage people in the community. Um, and who knows what the ultimate like decision or path forward to might be. Um, I'm not sure any of us right in this moment have all the answers, but we'll, you know, see what we can figure out tonight. Um, but whatever the path forward is, 
your work has been a really important part of the process and really grateful for all the time that you've put into it to to create a better outcome and, and create a better path forward um, for all of us. So thank you. Um, I'm going to turn things over to um, the doc committee. And real quick, folks, we are 20, 20 plus here. So if you're not talking, please mute your, your microphone and get a little feedback in the headphones. So thank, thank you. Um, thanks for that great introduction, Kasha. I had a whole section on, I could talk about process, but I think you covered all of that, so I don't need to do that. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Dana Dwinell Yardley. I'm one of the four folks uh, who were on the DOG committee. Um, what's going to happen? We have about 10 or 15 minutes to present our recommendations to you. Um, I'm going to give you the like big picture. Here's what we're recommending. Um, then Jessa Barnard is going to give you a deeper dive into what we learned through the survey um, and what we learned from other public comment. Um, and then Robin Goldman is going to give a deeper dive into some of the why around some of our recommendations. Um, and I also just want to acknowledge our fourth um, committee member, Diana Green, who uh, is not a public presenter, but is a hard worker on our committee, and she's here too. So um, just acknowledging that all four of us have, have done this work, even though you're only going to hear from three of us tonight. Um, yeah, I will echo what Kasha said in that our focus also was on making Hubbard Park safer and more accessible for everybody. Um, and balancing diverse needs. We really tried to listen hard to our community, to learn from the survey, to learn from feedback we got from people. Um, and as you all probably know, this is not an easy topic and there is no magic bullet. There is no perfect answer to the question of sharing space with dogs and humans leashed and unleashed. So just that as your context that nothing is perfect, but we wrestled with this for a while. We really dug into a lot of options and came up with what we thought um, was are some pretty solid recommendations. Um, Diana, if you can mute, that would be awesome. And there, there's some other clicking here. There's still a few people who are not muted. Can everybody please check and see that you're muted? It's possible that whoever's um, meeting host can also mute folks may, like on your end as well. I don't know if that's part of your powers. I will try to uh, re-sign in as the city managers on the city manager's room, conference room account, because then I think that's the first the power to do that. So I will be right back. Cool. Great. Well, I'm going to go ahead. Um, Jessa dropped into the chat uh, our rec the link, um, that, that page that she linked to has the survey uh, results, but also has our recommendations. You're welcome to open that and um, click and follow along. Uh, while I go through, I'll give you the general recommendations, but if you're a person who likes to read while well, people talk, go for it. Um, so we have five main recommendations, uh, and one of them is probably the juiciest and the one we'll spend a lot of time talking about, but I'll give you all five. Uh, first, uh, we fully support leashing on roads and in parking areas. We think that's great. Um, we know that that's already going to happen, and we just want to say, yes, we love that. Um, recommendation two, uh, we support a policy of leashing um, during specific hours, so from 2 to 4 p.m., the entire park being on leash, um, rather than applying an on-leash policy to trails, we're recommending a holistic entire park is leashed for specific hours of the day. Um, and again, Robin will get into the meat of why we opted for that. Um, Recommendation three is to do a slight tweak of the policy around shelters, which right now says leash around shelters at all times, to just say leash around shelters when occupied. Um, and this again is uh, most of the dog policy in Hubbard Park is enforced entirely by community social pressure. There are no police telling you that you're doing it wrong. Um, and we feel that uh, people are more likely to follow a policy when it makes sense and less likely to follow a policy when they're like, there's no humans here. It doesn't make sense for me to leash my dog. Therefore, all the policies are bogus. Throw them out. So um, a goal of we want the policies to make sense and minimize silliness so that people actually understand why they should be following them. So that's the, the tweak there around shelters when in use. 
Recommendation four uh, is we really support extra education. We heard this over and over and over again. People need more education about the way like that this policy exists. What does it look like to have a dog that's well-behaved and under control? What does it look like to have polite greetings? Um, it, yeah, it's one thing to have a policy. It's another to understand it and follow it. So we strongly recommend additional education. We came up with an initial brainstorm of what that might look like, but it would obviously need more work to craft a full like public education campaign about um, dog, 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 human interactions in the park. And recommendation five is that any policy that gets chosen be stable and sustainable. We don't want a policy to be picked that's just going to get changed again in six months. That's just like the first step into a deeper slide into limiting more access or a policy that gets revoked and changed back again to what we have now in another few months like really taking we really recommend something that we can feel like we can live with for a number of years that we can really settle into um that builds community trust uh, on this topic in general so i think i'll hand it off to jessa with that uh and yeah, when we get into uh, a discussion time, I don't know if there'll be a moment for dialogue between commissioners and committee members. I'm still happy to hold this sort of like main spokesperson role, but I might also back questions over to Jessa or Robin um, as needed. So yeah, thank you for the opportunity to present. And I hope we get to have some dialogue, some discussion and come to a thing that works well for everybody. And now Jessa with more about what we learned in the survey. Thanks, Dana. And um, I will share the same. Um, there was a great introduction already, so I will not, um, because we kind of hit on a lot of the background that is somewhat summarized in our document, so I will not repeat. Um, but I do want to start with um, an apology um, that we know the survey was not perfect. Uh, we know folks were frustrated, um, as we were, in fact, with some of the functionality of the survey that we didn't learn until the survey went live. We did our best. It was a city platform um, that was graciously uh, provided to us for free by the city. So we did what we could with it. Um, so we know, for example, you couldn't click the same time, weekday, weekend. We know some folks had trouble with sorting um, the options for policy preferences um, but I will say we did not, um, because of that, we, we knew, you know, thank you for those who reached out and told us those, we were aware of them. We could not change the format of the survey once it was live because then we couldn't um, collate results accurately either. So we did our best um, interpreting them. We knew some questions we had to take with a grain of salt or couldn't um, use as much as we wanted. But also um, the main point is that survey themes became very clear, um, mostly through the comments, to be honest. That was really what we spent the most of our time um, reading and um, looking at, because that was really important to us, is to get a sense of um, kind of the tenor um, of the of the community and the feedback on this, these questions. Um, so I will just highlight, I won't read through all of them, but some of the takeaways we found from the survey, um, obviously access to Hubbard Park, um, provides important physical, mental health, social benefits to off-leash dog walkers and their pets. There is a very passionate um, off-leash dog walking community among that, and a number of us count ourselves among that community. Um, and then we uh, we gave some, some quotes um, and some recognition that um, folks, this is a place people feel safe walking their dogs, that it's one of the few options in the community that allows this. Um, that it leads to social um, interactions among the dog owners and, and the dogs. So certainly heard that loud and clear in the survey. Um, we, you know, we recognize, as does the park management plan, that much of the rest of the city is not available to off-leash dogs. Um, North Branch trails, the bike paths, the sidewalks, roads, recreation fields, um, it's the only public land in Montpelier where dogs are officially permitted to be off-leash the only spot where folks can cross country ski, groomed trails with their dogs, um, and other off-leash loca um, locations may not be feasible to certain times of year for reasons like hunting or snowmobiling. Um, on the other side, we also heard from a number, and I and I want to um, 
sort of set aside, I think, a preconceived notion that it may be sort of a, a small minority of folks who don't feel comfortable um, visiting the park because of off-leash off dogs. It um, is not a small minority. It is, it is close, as Cassio said, fairly, fairly split. Um, you know, it, again, if you look back at the um, you know, so so it, there are a lot of people who um, not only so themselves for their for people reasons, so toddlers or elderly, um, but also people who have reactive dogs. Um, that it's also an issue for some dog walkers that they want to bring their dogs but don't feel comfortable visiting the park um, with other off leash dogs. So we pulled a number of quotes to that point. Um, <laughs> there were um, so there was a question about you know do you do you or do you not visit Hubbard Park? And of those who did not, who gave a reason for not visiting, um, it was actually 68% of them cited off-leash dogs as a reason. Um, and on a different question, 46% um, of respondents indicated they would rather not interact with off-leash dogs in the park. Um, and again, we this, is, this divides the community. There's really strong feelings on both sides. Um, there was a rough split between those who wanted no change to the current policy and those who did not think current regulations were sufficient. When we asked for the top policy preferences, again, we know there were some methodological issues with this question, but um, additional enforcement was the top choice for 46%, um, while leashing at all times in the entire park was the next popular choice at 31%. Leashing the entire park for certain hours was picked most often as the third choice. Um, and this is the other piece that really jumped out at us and really informed our recommendations, which Robin will go into more detail about, was the, on both sides, one thing that pretty almost everyone seemed to agree on is that there are concerns about compliance um, with the exist with the already the existing um, code of conduct and any future change. So um, this really informed some of our decisions about simplicity, consistency, and enforceability. Um, so there, there are an endless number of options for how the park space could be shared from trails to hours to zones to combinations of those. Um, we got a lot of quotes like, you know, um, don't make this chaotic. Like if you combine trails, hours, zones, days, it's going to be chaos. No one will follow it. Um, and again, Robin will say more about this, but um, we really think it needs to be workable so that... Um, people are able, willing um, to comply and um, and that we can have something sustainable over time. Um, and that also informed our recommendation about more sort of education um, also, because we know that people are already saying, even with the voice control, um, there's not great compliance with that. Um, and we also heard comments and we recognize, you know, some of this is that there are, um, there are sort of quote unquote bad apples out there. You know, we don't, we recognize that we're never going to solve all the problems. There are going to be some people who may not, um, you know, who may not comply, but let's make something that is the most workable for the most people so we can get the closest to a solution that works. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a bit of a summary of what we heard. There's the link to the full survey also for those who want to delve deeper um, and I'm happy to answer further questions you know folks if the commission wants to go more and more detail on any of the specific um, survey responses and with that I will turn it over to Robin okay thank you so um, what basically in reviewing all of the survey things what we concluded as the priority we noted the community is evenly split right? between people who really want to protect their off-leash and people who want on-leash and that the people who want on-leash have very strong um, safety concerns about not interacting with off-leash dogs, either because their own dog that's on a leash is going to get approached or their child's going to get approached or, um, you know, who is, what could happen. Um, we also noted the overall concern of both sides, people who like the off leash, but say there's not enforcement of existing policy. So we even have some problems with people here and there. And um, on the side of people who want on leash also saying enforcement and what is enforceable. The other thing that was the simplicity. And so looking at that and weighing our different options, why we went with the recommendation of hours over specific trails is that 
we found that it was very hard to easily break up the park and figure out where could be on leash trails that you're not going to intersect with what would theoretically be off leash trails and um, that voice control of dogs even if you have great voice control of a dog and you have great recall um, that doesn't mean that your dog is going to go isn't going to go zooming onto a nearby neighboring trail or ideas about you know if you're on natural area trail no, and it's going no. to go a, across um it's going to cross uh interpretive trail you know do you leash for that four feet what's our likelihood of compliance and thinking about what what makes the park a truly safe place for people who no. don't want to engage no. with um off-leash dogs and what is easy to enforce. And so what we came up with was that if uh, leashing throughout the entire park were to exist and we were suggesting two to four because it can catch some after school time, it catches time when um, people who I realize only like who are retired are, are able to use the park um, and that they could have the entire park to wander on whatever trail they wanted to not encounter an off-leash dog um, and if any off-leash dogs were encountered yes. you know that they would be violating the policy we also suggested this policy because we believe that the robust existing dog community that is in hubbard park and using it now um, would be more like would adapt to this policy um quite easily that um and get into the rhythm of not using the park in those hours um and that it would thus satisfy the goal of having some space where everyone who wants to avoid off-leash dogs can come and use the entire park and avoid off-leash dogs and where we encourage enforcement because it's a straightforward policy to follow um and it was kind of the main the main gist of what we are recommending that it it honors the fact that there's this is the only off leash place that half the community wants to keep as is, but also is setting aside a space and a time where the whole park can be used by people who don't want to encounter off leash dogs. Um, and part of the analysis of the two hours was also looking at we had had some suggestions from commissioners and in looking at some of the back and forth about previous plans or what other ideas were for recommendations and it looked like the recommendation was for certain trails to be off leash and doing the math on percentages it looked like the recommendation was that about 1.5 miles of trails out of about eight miles of trails in the total park be recommended to go on leash and that's about 12 and a half percent of the park and the two hours a day if we're in a 12 hours of daylight time is is 15 percent of the usable park time space is dedicated to on leash use so we this is our proposal i just want to give a moment if there are other thoughts from like that was awesome robin and and listening to both jessa and robin if anyone else from the dog committee has any things we missed that we should say before we turn it back over to everybody else. Dana, I, I do want to make sure to get, oh, sorry, Diana, go ahead. Oh. Did, did you have a, anything you wanted to add, Diana? I'm good. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to mention one question. So I know it will probably come up is the accessibility trail. And um, our concern with the accessibility trail was whether that would raise um, state or and federal disability law issues if we, um, you know, if we consider walking in off the off leash dog policy a privilege of visiting the park, and and we um, put a more limited policy on that trail alone um, that could be sort of on its face. Um, calling out or discriminating against folks with mobility disabilities that who only have access to the park through that trail. So we would suggest if the commission wanted to go in that direction, probably getting some um, advice from city council, or sorry, city attorney, um, 
about that. That was just our, our concern, but with an hour based policy, um, it's applied consistently to all of the trails um, and not singling out one trail that only folks with um, mobility issues could use. I just wanted to throw that out there. We have more detail in our written comments. All right. Um, thank you so much. That's really um, helpful insights into your thinking and process and reasoning. Um, at this point, I'd love to open it up to all of you for public comment. Um, and I am thinking, um, well, if all of you can keep your comments to two oh. minutes or less, that'll make space for more people to participate. And also just be aware of various ideas that have already been shared. Um, we're all on Zoom. So if you want to like second something, you could put up a thumbs or a comment or something like that um, and save space for other people to share different ideas and, and, and feedback. Um, and also just a reminder, we're looking for solutions. We're trying to be creative. We're all in this pickle together, trying to figure out how we accommodate our, our whole community. So if you have other ideas or um, things that are on your mind that can help us all get out of this pickle, um, feel free to make suggestions as well. Um, Anything else I'm missing on that? I think that's I think that's good. So um, let's go ahead and open it for public comment. I see a hand raised from Justin already, just spot on with the clicking fingers. Go for it, Justin. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. I want to start by thanking the Dog Committee and the Parks Commission. Um, I really can sense the care and the respect that you put into this issue, uh, and it's so thoughtful um, throughout this process. So. Thank you, committee members. Thank you, Parks Commission. And I want to voice my support for the recommendations that were just outlined by the committee. I think they're entirely reasonable. I think they're entirely appropriate. I loved how Dana summarized them as um, very appropriate to follow in terms of reason of the reasonableness of them. Um, I thought that was so well articulated. Uh, and I especially want to support, um, obviously, the, the two-hour time window and recommendation number five, too which talked about having stable policies, not having this be the leading edge of a slippery slope of more changes. And and um, so I really would, I, I support all of that. And I'll also reveal my affinity. I am an off-leash dog supporter and person. My wife and I have a well-trained dog who passed his canine good citizen test. Um, so we use the park. It's vital for him. It's vital for us. It's why we live in Montpelier. Uh, it's part of this great community that we have. And having said all that, we understand the need for compromise and balance. And I think this approach absolutely strikes it. And so I voice 100% support for it and and want to thank you and, and hope that we um, roll out this plan and we all do it together because I am certainly willing to do my part. So thank you all. all right. Thanks, Justin. Um, any hands out there? Um, oh, also Justin. Tripped me up for a second. Different, Justin. Um, <laughs> thank you. And, you know, I, I want to second what uh, Justin, number one, said. I appreciate all the care that's been shown to this issue. I am a strong proponent of off-leash dog use in the park. Um, and I want to be clear that this policy, I think, can't be, you know, a, a beachhead for more restrictive dog policies. I I will confess, you know, I know there are much more important issues in the world right now. The world is literally burning. Reproductive rights have been rolled back. This is not that. This is dogs in the park. Um, but I've been very disappointed in the way that this issue has been handled over time. Um, I think it shows some of the uh, same dynamics as our national political scene in that you have a determined minority, and I, you know, it is close to even, but it is a minority that has pressed this issue again and again over the last decade. There was a, a vote. It went against those who would like to see more restrictions. And yet here we are, not at the ballot box, but in a process that was led through the, the um, parks plan um, as one element amidst a lot of great ideas um, and has persisted. And, you know, we have two major parks in this city. One is already on leash. For those of us who, uh, for whom having off-leash 
areas is important, there was one place. And it's not, you know, we can't go up to Irish Hill or other places in the area because they don't offer the same safety. They don't offer the same social interactions. You know, I have a good friend who whose dog was shot and killed by hunters um, because when you go outside of a town like Montpelier and you have your dog uh, out in the woods, uh, it's not a safe place for them to be off leash. So it's a very important resource. Um, and I have real reservations about whether a half measure is going to satisfy those who are very worked up about this. And, you know, I'm not discounting their feelings, but I, I'm worried that this is going to just continue to be a source of dissension and uh, unhappiness. And I think that by raising it and picking open this wound again, you're just uh, perpetuating an, an issue that would be best just uh, left at the status quo. But if the Parks Commission feels like it has to adopt something to uh, address the concerns of the minority, uh, please limit it to what the DOG committee has developed in a very thoughtful and thorough process. Oops, uh, thanks, Justin. Anybody else? Walter, did I see you just come off mute? Uh, yeah, I'm part of that minority and I'm gonna give you a little incident here. This winter, I'm out skiing in North Branch by Cumming Street, and an unleashed dog attacked me, and it wouldn't listen to the owner. I don't know if, you know, behavioral issues or whatnot. If I didn't have my ski poles out, the dog was going to come at me. I've been attacked any number of times over the years. I'm a bicyclist, too, and I ride in the park, and unleashed dogs would come at me. And I've taken defensive measures. So I'm going to support the measures that you've come up with now and give them a try. Um, as someone who has been attacked, is not a dog lover. Um, <clears throat> but I'm willing to give it a try, what you've come up with. Thanks, Walter. Uh, Rachel. And Rachel, do you mind um, sharing your last name when you come on? Oh, yep. Sorry about that. I'm Rachel Stevens, and I'll just share. I'm married to Justin, who commented one. Of, Justin number one <laughs> commented. <laughs> um, I just wanted to thank Walter for his comment. Um, I was I submitted a comment in support of um, off leash use, and I'm I'm was really excited to hear that you thought this could be a workable solution because I also thought it was a great idea to do times for all trails for the whole park. I think that may be the best way to um, get community support. I really liked the, the comment um, or the recommendation letter from the dog committee talking about a solution that is easy to say, it's easy to understand and we can kind of self-police it. Um, I think the dog users that are in there every day, I mean, we're in the park every day with our dog, I think it would be pretty straightforward for us to put up some signs with the with the time period for us to make sure that people you know that aren't regular in the park to make sure they know it um, and it's it's easy to explain it makes sense given okay. the feedback um, yeah. for the the folks that wanted on leash so I think it's worth a try it seemed I, I was actually really impressed mm -hmm. with the recommendation. Um, and as someone who was <laughs> coming to the meeting to oppose any on leash time, I actually felt like this was a really good compromise. So just wanted to say thank you, Walter, and um, support wholeheartedly the recommendations as proposed. Walter is anti-dog right there. <laughs> I am anti-dog at the park, but I'll... <laughs> thank you, Rachel. Anybody else? Hello. Renee. Uh, my name is. Oh, oh no. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. I thought you were Renee. Go ahead. No, thank you. Um, my name is Colleen Caron. And um, like a lot of people, I believe, on this call, I'm up there every day. 
um, and I support this this recommendation. It seems very fair, um, and to have taken into consideration some of the routines. I mean, some going back like 25 years of the people up there, and also to acknowledge that there are people who don't want to be approached by dogs. Um, so I. That's all I need to say. I agree with the others who have said they support this. It's simple, it's straightforward, um, and it makes sense. So thank you. Thanks, Colleen. Um, Ray, Renee, um, were you trying to say something earlier? Maybe not. This is my pause for introverts. <laughs> um, if I hearing no other comment right now, um, let's um, I would love to um, turn it over to our staff and hear from Alec and and Kara. Um, either one or both of you to hear kind of what your thoughts are about this and especially based on like what you see in the parks and what it might mean for implementation and um, well whether it's this or anything else like what implementation might look like and from your expertise and your eyes on the ground kind of perspective. No Billy no. Oh. <laughs> Dennis if you can hear me would you mind muting? Your your voice is coming through on the... Of course. Thank you. I, I think that was the bad dog voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, thank you uh, for taking so much care with this issue. Um, both the Parks Commission and the Dog Committee, and especially thank you to Kara, uh, my colleague who um, supported the Dog Committee and so much else in our parks. Um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Alec Ellsworth and I'm the parks director for the city of Montpelier. I have been working here for a little bit more than 10 years and I've been the parks director since the beginning of 2020. Um, and I think I wanna, I wanna do three things and then Kara I think wants to um, say a little bit themselves and then I, at the end, after Kara talks, I want to give a professional recommendation, a, a sort of a staff recommendation um, based on uh, our experience. So um, the first thing, and I think Kasha covered a lot of this in her preamble, is just about history. And I think you covered a lot of the important stuff. Um, most people probably realize that park use has increased dramatically in the last 50 years and you know COVID especially was a watershed moment uh, in terms of people using the outdoor resources that we have um, and from my perspective that is absolutely wonderful uh, it is the reason I have a job and something that I care deeply about and so I'm thrilled to see more people using our parks um, and the other side of that is I think it is you know leading to an increase in uh, you know conflicts between user groups and you, uh, I'm professionally connected to other people around Vermont, other people around the country, and I will tell you, everybody here, we are not alone in this issue. It is something that all municipalities face. It's very challenging. And, and when you talk to parks professionals around the state, it's one of the more challenging issues that they face. Um, so I think we're doing a great job at at addressing the issue um, and tackling it in a civil way and hopefully come up with a solution that works for everybody. Um, the first canine code of conduct was put in place in 1999. Um, and I went through some of the old annual reports to try to get a little bit of this history. And what the commission, what the commission said in their annual report was, you know, basically due to drastically increased park use, um, there have been more conflicts and the city felt there was a need to come up with the canine code of conduct. So they put together a committee and they, and they did that. Um, that, that code of conduct was then updated in 2012. 
Um, and that was also the time during which the dog waste stations were added because the dog waste was becoming a, a really significant issue that people felt needed to be addressed. Um, and so here we are, you know, 25 years after that first initial um, recommendation and, and park use has only gone up. And um, it's a, I think it's a great time to be looking at the issue again. Um, as Kasha mentioned, you know, park, <laughs> this, this policy is sort of inherited from the old days in Hubbard Park, where the park was actually, they would close the gates between Columbus Day and Memorial Day, couldn't get into the park, it was basically a free for all. Um, there were also during the season, you could drive right to the tower, you could drive around a lot of roads that people are accustomed to just walking on right now. Uh, you could ride dirt bikes around the park if you wanted. You could you could pretty much do whatever you wanted. And what that meant was that, um, you know, the park was basically only welcoming to the most able-bodied people who were willing to, you know, put up with that kind of um, environment. And so I'm, I'm really happy to see that we've come a long way from those days where people are more respectful and we have clear guidelines. Um, so um, let's see. So yeah, basically the, the inherited policy up to this point is that, you know, dogs may be off leash in Hubbard Park as long as they follow the canine code of conduct. And that's, um, you know, reflected in the, in the park rules and also in the city ordinances. So um, I wanted to talk sort of about policy process a little bit. Um, as the commission decides tonight, um, you know, what we're right now, we're sort of examining what the impact of the current policy is. And I think it's important for the commission to think about what the impact of, you know, an updated policy would be on, on the various user groups. Um, and not only think about what that would be, but think about how we can evaluate that and when we want to evaluate it. Do we want to evaluate it in six months, in a year, in two years? I think um, it would be wise to set up some sort of like checkpoints or tripwires, some people call them, to like you know, let's let's not just like set a policy and forget about it. Let's let's measure, let's reassess um, these impacts. And, and the dog committee said basically the same thing. So that that's, you know, based on my observation of the commission and of city council, I think it's really important to set up those checkpoints after um, a policy so that you're evaluating the impacts and you don't just forget, um, which, you know, is a perfectly understandable thing that happens in a municipality. You all are volunteers, people change over. Um, so. I'd like to see that happen. Um, the staff, you know, we're here as a resource to provide history and um, in insight. And then, you know, most importantly, we're here to implement whatever the commission decides. So, um, you know, the Parks Commission's mandate is to set up, you know, the rules for all of our parks and our roles to uh, make sure that those rules um, are clearly communicated and, um, you know, people can understand them. Um, I want to talk about enforcement, which is my third thing I'll get to next. But um, the last the last sort of just like policy and process piece I want to say is um, <laughs> that the rules that the Parks Commission decides will have to go through a secondary process afterward to be enshrined within the city ordinances, um, which is the only way that they have any actual teeth because the, the Parks Commission can't make laws for the city. Only city council can do that. And so I... I'm quite sure the council will support and historically has whatever the parks commission decides, but that's a process that will be like, you know, uh, putting forward an amendment to the uh, ordinances, having two public hearings, and then, you know, adopting said ordinances. Um, so that's just a, a FYI to the parks commission and everyone. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about enforcement because that has come up as well. Um, you know, based on my experience now, this is my third round of sort of going through discussions and updates of the dog canine code of conduct. And my experience is that, you know, there's a lot of momentum after this um, process happens. The dog community is really engaged. People are handing out flyers and sending out um, public education materials. And then that sort of starts to wane as time goes on. And then, um, you know, the issue comes to a head and then there's sort of like a flare up again, whether that's in the commission or front porch forum or whatever. And so I, I'm really interested as a staff member in seeing uh, enforcement um, strategies that are lasting. And I, I really appreciate that the dog committee put that in their recommendation too. I, I like a lot of what is in there. Um, and I, I think, you know, I wanted to present sort of like a spectrum of enforcement options because 
<laughs> one side of the spectrum is to do nothing, continue to rely on sort of social pressure um, and, and the signs, the, you know, signs that we have out there. And then I would say like all the way on the other side of the spectrum is there, you know, there's an animal enforcement officer in the city code of ordinances. And that position is not filled, you know, because it, there hasn't really been a need for it. Um, but that is like having an animal enforcement officer who can um, like issue civil violations, you know, tickets and um, that type of thing. You know, maybe somewhere in the middle, which I, I'm I'm sure quite sure is how we're going to land. Some of the things the dog committee recommended, I really I, I love the idea of um, making sure that everyone who gets a dog license um, also gets the K9 code of conduct rules for all our parks, not just for Hubbard, um, and I have to sign something saying they read them. Um, I think I would love to see a process outlined, and I think this is a whole separate meeting, but. Um, I would love to see a process outlined for how to link up with the community justice center um, so that when there are, um, you know, when the, so there is a process for, by which if people aren't able to follow the new rules, we're able to refer them to mediation or some way to, you know, have something to point to that has some teeth, not that I would want to be like out there with a gun and badge, but I think it's important that we have something we can point to to say, if people aren't following the rules, this is steps one, two, and three. You know, step one is a polite ask. Step two is a citation. Step three is you get referred to CJC. I'm making that up in this moment, so that's not my recommendation, but something like that. Um, and then I, so I do want to give a professional recommendation, and and I've I thought long and hard about this, um, whether or not to do this because it's sort of a going out on a limb. Nobody asked me to do it, and. Um, but I think it's important for for me to weigh in and and the reasons are, you know, I want to give an example of a policy to the commission that is would be very clear to implement um, from the staff's perspective. And also based on my perspective of being here for 10 plus years, something that would satisfy, I think, all user groups and kind of like put the issue to rest in a way so that we don't have to continually revisit this every five or 10 years. Um, but yeah, first I want to let Kara, Kara say something before I give my staff recommendation. Now we're all in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> None of us <laughs> are going to say, but Kara, take it away. <laughs> okay. It's short and we'll, we'll get to Alec back. Um, yeah. So if you weren't here at the beginning, my name is Kara Barbero. I work for the parks and trees department for the last six years. I've enjoyed Hubbard park for almost 20 years. Um, my job title is crew leader, but I often tell people it's park steward because caring for the parks and, you know, creating spaces that, uh, or stewarding spaces that everyone can enjoy is like what's really close to my heart. And, you know, when I think about on or off leash, um, you know, I, I like to really think about not that, but the accessibility part and making the park accessible to all people. Um, because I, I think, you know, we can get really focused in on dogs and leashes, but really if we, you know, look at the bigger picture, it's about letting everybody enjoy the park um, that wants to. And when I learned that people don't come to Hubbard Park because of dogs, I was like, I broke my heart, you know? I, I thought, oh my gosh, I, I had no idea. Um, but then I started working at the park and um, and I'm there a lot and, and I kind of got it like I've had you know been eating my lunch and had food taken away from me by dogs <laughs> um have dogs jump in my car when i open the door um and watch you know watch the little toddler friend get knocked off his feet and and i've been bitten as well while i'm at work and um in <clears throat> november i had surgery and when i when i was ready to like walk again i thought oh I'll go up to the park for a walk. And immediately my body just like clenched up because I was like, I said, oh, no, I won't. And I went to North Branch Nature Center um, because I knew there I would be safe. And it was really a sad feeling that like the place I work and the place I want to make accessible for everyone didn't feel accessible to me. And, and then it really like sunk in like what a big issue it is. And I, I'm sad that it took my own personal experience to really make it sink in, but, but it, it did. Um, so, um, 
I understand, like I get it, why some people don't come. And I also get why people want to have their, their dogs off leash. Um, and I, but when I saw the recommendations, I, I felt like, I felt, I mean, I was very neutral. I think everyone on the dog committee maybe could say that. <laughs> I, I, that was my role to be a neutral staff liaison and I, and I am. Um, but when I, I thought about, you know, if I didn't work in the parks and I saw this new recommendation that two hours a day during my work hours were when I could go to the park and not encounter off leash dogs, I thought that just didn't really feel equitable. Um, and I'm, personally more in favor of, of locations, trails, or areas um, that would be on leash or off leash all the time, because I think that gives people, um, you know, that people can know that certain places are, are okay for off leash and certain places they can, the people who, who don't want to encounter off leash dogs, they can go there anytime and, um, I know that that won't won't be an issue and and rather and I understand like the whole the you know the trail intersections are a big issue and that's why I like you know I I like I know it did come up during the during the meetings um with the committee like it popped up sometimes to have certain areas but it didn't it did never like come to fruition and that's that's okay um but like they you know the recommendations were made and um but I, I just like from what I know of the park, spending a lot of time there, that seems to me like it would would um, create a more uh, clear and accessible options for a lot of people who are looking for different experiences at Bird Park. And that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Gara. And yeah, I'm really glad that that the staff has a chance to to share our thoughts too, because. Um, you know, we do spend a lot of time here and have a lot of experience in a, in a, in a sort of unique way. Um, so I'll preface my recommendation by saying two things. Um, first and most importantly, our staff and myself, um, you know, you know, all of our staff are ready to implement whatever the commission decides. So we are, we are 100% behind whatever, whatever's decided and, and we're, we'll work in our best effort to do so. The recommendation uh, I'm about to give um, is just meant to be provided as an example. Um, I am not a voting member of the commission. I basically have no say in this, um, but I, I feel it's important to provide this, um, to provide an example of something that seems usable and, and could potentially put the issue to rest. Um, so the proposal is basically just, um, and, and and I think the dog committee found out as I did when you decide that you have to make a recommendation to the public for how to settle this issue, it's very difficult because <laughs> you might think that you have the answer, but there is a 100% chance that your recommendation is gonna be upsetting to probably everybody if you're doing a good job, um, but you know at least a good segment of the population. So people love this park and that is a wonderful thing and something that motivate you know keeps me fueled every day in my job um and hubbard park is a very special place um you know it's it's a unique park it's wrapped by neighborhoods it has a his national uh tower on the historic register of national places um very mature forests which are unusual for you know most parts of vermont and it's um it's just a special place and i think i think we all recognize that and for me i was motivated by two things when i decided you know to make this recommendation the first thing is whenever presented with the choice like choose the simpler option because from our staff's perspective i think from the public's perspective that's going to be the best thing um the second thing to me that was important is that people who want to walk off leash i think want to be able to go at any time of day and expect to find a space where they can walk safely their dogs off leash. And I think people who don't want to encounter off leash dogs want the same thing. I think they both ultimately want those two things. And so that was, that was the deciding factor for me is how do you provide a recommendation where everybody can come to Hubbard park and find a place where their expectations can be met. So the recommendation would be to, split the park into two. 
um, right here where I'm sitting at the park office is sort of the narrowest part of the park. The park, before we expanded it, it used to be sort of hourglass shaped. So the southern half of the park um, includes all of the roads, it includes the two shelters, it includes the tower, it includes the accessible trail. The northern half of the park includes seven fireplaces, all the expansion area, the connection to the North Branch Park, um, and that that whole region, the, the hemlock old growth forest. Um, so the, the southern section I'm proposing to be all on leash 100% of the time, and the northern section to be all off leash 100% of the time. Um, and the advantages to this in my mind are, it's very simple to implement. So going back to the simplicity um, principle, there's only three trails that cross this area. You could very simply have a sign where each of those trails cross to say, when you cross this sign, your dog has to be on leash or off leash. Um, the second thing is that it would completely mitigate any sort of dog vehicle um, interactions, which was a big issue when the, the commission was deciding upon the management plan. So if dogs have to be on leash in all the road areas, this is basically not an issue anymore. Um, thirdly, and I think most importantly for me, this is a recommendation that would potentially put this issue to rest permanently for the reason I stated at the beginning, which is that at after like if such a if this if this were implemented, everybody in Montpelier or who is visiting Montpelier could come to Hubbard Park and expect to find a place that met their expectations, either for walking a dog off leash or being on leash. And so the southern half of the park, I think, is where most children and families want to go. It's where the shelters are, the tower. It's where our more accessible trails are. So older people um, would be more likely to walk or more able to walk. And um, I think the biggest disadvantage to my recommendation is that I know that a lot of people who like to walk their dog off leash are in that group of older people who are looking for a more stable, firm footing, um, predictable place to walk. And it would, there's, there's no doubt that this recommendation would change you know, would have to change people's routines. And I think as, as somebody mentioned, you know, some, some of these routines are 25 years old and, and that's significant. Um, but if I look at the 40 year career of my predecessor, this issue came up over and over and over and over. It was never settled. And if I think about having a 40 year career here, which I'm not saying I'm going to, <laughs> but if I'm still here in 30 years, having spent 10 wow. years here, and we're revisiting this issue every five years or every 10 years, I'll be so, so disappointed in myself and the community. And I really wanna see a solution that is not necessarily gonna make everybody happy. I'm not, I, I recognize some people are gonna be upset, but I wanna see a solution that puts it to bed for good permanently. Um, and I think I will leave it there. I'm sorry. I was so long winded about all this stuff, but, and, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't give advance notice, but I think it was one of those situations where, you know, when, when you really faced with the reality and I, I felt like I, you know, this meeting was coming up and I, I had to make a statement. Um, so, uh, that's, that's my recommendation. And I'll actually I'll close just by <clears throat> reiterating that. It's just an example of something that I think would be effective, very easy to implement, and we are 100% behind whatever uh, gets decided tonight or any night um, as far as implementation and uh, ready to ready to do the work that is needed to make it happen. Great. Um, thanks, um, Alec and Kara, to both of you um, for your courage, because uh, I think those are both courageous statements. I really appreciate that. Um, and um, let's turn things over to the commissioners. There are five of us on the commission um, and I'm losing your faces a little bit because we're all like intermingled with everybody else. So if I, um, uh, let's open it up. And I just, um, a reminder, uh, this has just been a really great, I think conversation and tenor and listening and everything. Um, and just, not just to my fellow commissioners, but to everybody that, um, you know, to make our conversation is drawing on, like, just like Alec and Kara, like our experiences, our life experiences, and 
our conversations in the community, our emails, our one-on-one -on -one interactions, surveys, all these things, and everything we're hearing from you all tonight. Um, and um, hopefully, you know, lo looking at the big picture and, and broader perspective and um, just, um, yeah, let's turn it over to commissioners who wants to chime in and, and share kind of thoughts on and ideas and um, response to some of the things that we've been hearing tonight. I can start. Uh, my name is Stephanie Hunt. Um, I wanted to start by just thanking the committee um, for your time and efforts in all of this. I know you guys have been putting in lots of hours towards this, and I think you did come up with a very thoughtful recommendation, um, but there are a few reasons why I am unable to support that recommendation. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate that although there are a lot of other places in town where people can go walk, you know, with their dog on a leash or without their dog. Hubbard Park is often thought of as the gem of Montpelier. It offers a different environment, different biomes, different experience, different terrain. And I think that should be accessible to all people at all time. Um, I do believe that the two to four PM hours are just a too narrow band of hours as a parent to a young child, uh, which is one of the groups that we heard from in the survey over and over again, saying that they are not feeling comfortable taking their young children to the park. Most young children nap from two to four. So none of those people would be able to use the park with this recommendation still. Um, I also wanted to bring up kind of the issue of like the culture of non-compliance that um, we do not want to happen with any recommendation that's put forward. And I fear that by making all areas of the park on leash during um, a window of time, even the areas of the park which are not heavily used where you can go and not come across another person, you could be creating a culture of noncompliance. Because why would people leash their dog if they're not going to come across another soul if they're in you know, one of the back corners of the park? Um, so I want a policy that's, you know, will be followed. Um, and I also kind of wanted to dispel the feeling that this is a minority of people who have this issue. Um, our survey results indicated that 45.6% of people would rather not interact, interact with off-leash dogs, whereas 40.7% 40 40 of people would like to interact with off-leash dogs. So it's actually the minority that would like to interact with off-leash dogs. And also to the question of, do you feel that regulations are sufficient? What is it? 45% said yes, and 46% said no. So it's actually the minority that feels that the current canine code of conduct is working. Um, so I am more in favor of what Alec has proposed. I do think there could be an in-between where there is a large zone of the park that is on leash for the majority of the day rather than all the time, but that would probably more be more difficult to implement. And I know we want something simple. Um, so I'm going to stop my comment there for now. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. Who else? Hi, everyone. Lincoln here. Again, I want to say thank you. I mean, over 500 respondents to a survey takes a lot of work and posting the and sending us the draft and that write up summary and having things accessible on the website for everybody to see. I feel like that is commendable and I really appreciate just how the rollout of the survey happened and i really agree with all of the outreach and education recommendations that you all made i think wherever we go from here um you know it's, it's a fact that it's going to take everybody to help everybody else adjust to a new normal and i love the ideas about using that dog licensing licensing process as an opportunity so just nice creative thinking there um you know i think i definitely hear the concern about um, 
leashing certain trails and not other trails at the same time in the same area and having intersect intersections be an issue. I saw that reflected in the survey comments. And I think you all really brought that to my attention that, you know, it might just be easier to have a, a blanket leash on or a blanket leash off statement in time or in day or in zone versus having trying to have the same area be on and off leash together simultaneously. Um, I think it's nice to feel that everybody is really getting behind the need for us to be enforcing leashing on the roads and in the parking areas, in and around the shelters. At events is something I wanted to bring up. If we're trying to bring people to Hubbard Park for a community gathering or Park of Palooza, there should be no concern that you're going to be interacting with an off-leash dog once you're at that event. Um, so you can bring whomever in your family. That's really important to me. Um, and, you know, I, 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 do, I do not feel like the two to four recommendation reflects the survey results that I, that I saw. Um, Stephanie already mentioned some of those reasons, so I don't want to be redundant, but one of the questions that was really helpful for me was the ranking of the recommendations. And it sounded like, you know, over 300, 360 people to my calculation wanted dogs to be leashed all the time everywhere. Um, and to me, you know, if I'm hearing that, I'm hearing that number and I'm also hearing the large percentage of people who aren't coming to the park or citing dogs off leash for not coming to the park. I wanna see more of a 50-50 split. I think Alec proposed that and it's something I could support. Um, I could also think about, you know, that's this, this core zone of Hubbard or Hubbard South um, as being, you know, really important to have this off leash, this on leash opportunity, uh, you know, 50% to majority of the time. That's probably where I'm starting from, and I feel like that is uh, informed by by the survey, and that it is it is a split issue, and I don't think two to four is is really a fair shake for those all those people that came out respond to the survey and um, the people who aren't coming to the park. And I mean, I'll I'll just briefly say, you know, I, when I was six, I was attacked by a dog, and it was the first time I had to go to the hospital, and it just takes one time. Okay. Like I, you know, I, I feared my own dog for years. And when a dog comes to me and I'm not leashed, you know, 25, 30 years later, I still have that same just innate bio reaction. And it's real. It is, it is a trauma response and it's real. And we need to be thinking about the mental health. Yes. Of people who need to be out there with their dogs off leash and make sure that opportunity is always and forever offered in Hubbard park and also the people that um, are, are really scared of dogs off leash and have written off Hubbard Park because that's the end of it. And what I hear from them is it's a dog park, forget about it. I've tried, forget about it. And that is what you know I'm looking to change is that rhetoric and coming out of tonight with a policy so those people can feel like, yes, we are also being included along with folks who have been and will continue to use the park with their dog off leash. Thank you, Lincoln. Um, I do want to mention, um, there's been a little comments in the chat and just wanna clarify on the, so everybody understands how their ranking worked. Um, as I understand it, the um, it was everything on leash at the top and no leashes anywhere at the bottom. And we all saw the same order. It wasn't like randomly selected. So if somebody had the survey and was overwhelmed by the options and didn't move anything, then the on leash everywhere appeared at the top for those people who basically didn't participate. Um, and so just wanna, so base, I, um, I think those were all amazing points. I just wanna clarify on that piece of the survey that it's really hard to trust that data to know how many people like really actually wanted at the top versus moving things around. Um, so I just wanted to like surface that survey by us. Did I get that right dog committee? I don't wanna like clarify in the wrong way. Okay, great. And Kasha, could you also speak towards, um, there's a comment in the chat about trail density and like the South versus North portion of the park, I mean, or I can just say it, basically the new park acquisition area, we don't have any mapped trails on that portion of the park, but there are trails there. We're working on updating the maps as we confirm 
um, the trails in that portion. So there's actually way more trails in the north portion of the park um, than are visible on the current park map. So it, it would be a fairly equal split if we were to divide the park north versus south in terms of trail mileage. It's 100 acres in the south and about 150 in the north. OK, thank you. Let's see, um, Andrew or Emily, do you want to chime in here? Sure, I can go. Um, I fully support um, everything that the other commissioners have said. Like, I'm really, um, I like most of what the Canine Committee suggests, and um, I'm very excited about some of the changes there recommending um but i also feel like just two hours um for the whole park isn't necessarily the best solution um for all the reasons that that have been raised and also um kind of coming at it from the other side like <clears throat> if someone really needs the time with their dog off leash and they have a really busy schedule and they only have from two to four um certain days like not being able to to go to the park and those days would be um a real bummer so um i really like this zone option and um i think my my thought was maybe something like mornings um off leash and afternoons on leash for the that core zone if we wanted to make it like not too much more complicated, but also then allow um, for some off-leash time in that zone. Um, or, um, yeah, I liked Alex's suggestion as well, but um, yeah. Thanks, Emily. Thanks. Andrew, I see you raised your hand. Yep. Hi, everybody. Andrew Brewer. Um, from the beginning of this discussion, when we put out our management plan um, and we decided we would have a dog committee, um, we we were going to have uh, a park commissioner kind of as a liaison uh, facilitating um, the dog committee. And, and I had the pleasure of doing that for, for several months, um, kind of up until the point where the um, uh survey was put into the field looking results and then and then stephanie um helped out after that um um and it's it's fair to say that i was pretty and, and, and was, was very adamant that there are going to be areas of the park where people can go and, and have an on-leash dog experience um and i don't want to speak for the, all of my fellow park commissioners, but I think that was a common thread uh, amongst the park commissioners. And um, so that we actually recommended that in the in the management plan, and um, got some feedback from the community. Wait a minute, um, we need we need to we need to discuss this more, and that was the genesis of the dog committee. Um, and um, Dana and Robin and Jessa, Je Jessa and Diana uh, graciously um, devoted a lot of time uh, going back uh, to the summer and fall uh, working on this. Um, a lot of meetings, a lot of piling through uh, comments, putting together the survey, the, the, the preamble before the survey, explaining what the survey was about. Um, and and so you know we had we had we had gone that run the gamut of you know, uh, our, you know all the things we're talking about tonight are we going to have specific areas are there going to be hours is it going to be specific trails um tons of excellent conversation uh, getting into you know why some of those ideas would work some of them would not work um i i, I also want to say uh 
I, and I don't think anybody else had any idea that Alec was going to make that recommendation tonight, by the way. In fact, I spoke with Alec about an hour before the meeting. He didn't mention it then. So we had zero idea um, that Alec was going to, was going to make a recommendation like that. Um, I just want, I don't want people to think that there had been any kind of discussion beforehand. There was not, um, none whatsoever. Um, and, and so uh, I, I like the idea of, of, you know, being big, big chunks of the park. Um, and in the recommendation, it's the entire park for a couple hours. Um, but I also want to augment that. I think we'll come somewhere in between. I do. I, it, it feels important to me that there are, um, w when people come to the park, I like the way Alec put it, that, you know, the, the devil's in the detail here. What we're trying to do is to come up with a policy that accommodates to some degree as best we can everyone's expectations that when they come to the park regardless of of you know whether you're a dog person not a dog person uh somewhere in between that when any time you go to the park you're going to find some place uh which will meet your need um whatever that is um so i i like the idea of coming somewhere <laughs> In between, my initial reaction to Alex's uh, uh, idea, um, it, it, my my first reaction was, well, that cuts out the field, the dog field, um, which is you know at, right at the top of the hill where people park, um, and you know we'd have to put if, if we if we do the northern part, we'd have to give some thought into where do people park to get to the northern part. To the to the northern part and the new parcels where they can walk their dogs uh or off off leash um um so that you know so that i i i, I kind of think we're on the right track but i i think i'd want to hear more i'd want to hear some more you know look at a map harder and, and some more suggestions on how to divide it up like that um so I think we're on the I think we're kind of on the right track, but I I, I think I need to hear more. Um a couple of other comments. Um I I work in the I work in the state house, and there's some other people on the screen who also work down in the state house and hang around the legislature all day long. And we hear the idea about um I don't want this to become a slippery slope. I hear we hear it all the time. We hear it all the time when legislation comes up. My I, I think it's fair to say there's not one single piece of legislation. Um, or decision or rule made anywhere that doesn't possibly lead to a slippery slope. Um, and and you'll hear the legislature themselves say all the time that we can't, you know, there's nothing that we do that will bind the hands of the future legislature. And I think it's the same thing here uh, with the Park Commission. Um, it is not our intention. I And I, I do think I speak with the part, for the Park Commission on this. There's no discussion of um, you know, let's just pass something now and then we'll we'll keep chipping away at it over the years. There's nothing there's been no conversation like that whatsoever. Um, I think Alec makes a good point of setting a policy um and then but having a policy of assessing to see how things are working and see how things are going. Um, um I don't know if we'd actually discuss this, but it seems to me the dog committee ought to be permanent. Um Jessa, I think that means you're on all the time. Robin, you guys are on this dog committee for the rest of time. Um, um, but um, you know, I, I don't think we discuss it, but I think it's probably a good idea to have to have a subcommittee, kind of a permanent standing subcommittee that can assess and, and look at what's happening. Um, so th those are my thoughts for the moment. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. I think that's um all of us, except me. Um, I um, wanted to compile kind of the, it seems like the ideas that are surfacing here is the recommended two to 4 p.m. in the entire park. There's that Alex suggested the South Leashed, North Unleashed. And then Emily, I think you, I heard you suggest zones. Can you repeat, can you make your rec recommendation again, Emily, to make sure I can capture it? Sure. Um, yeah, I recommended having the same zones that Alex suggested, but making them um, the four zone be off leash in the morning and on leash in the afternoon or vice versa so that the whole park would be accessible to everyone. 
I also wanted, Tasha, I think we should mention the reason that we are trying to make a decision now, like in terms of the um, planning for implementation and the summer season coming and all that. Go for it. Oh, you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, the we had to, this decision has been a long time in the making, Um. as everyone said, over a year. And um, part of the ability to implement means that we have to be able to plan and get the resources we need and all that. Um, the staff needs to be able to work it into the schedule and everything. So um, there's actually been quite a bit of pressure on the commission to try to get it done. And we put pressure on the canine committee to like get their recommendations out. And um, so there is some pressure to make the decision. I know this feels like there's new ideas coming out right now. Um, and ideally that would not be the case. But um, this is, we're trying to problem solve and we're trying to be efficient about it so that we can finally get this implemented this summer um, after many, many months of planning. So, And, the, um, I, and um, while it may seem like you could implement something like this at any time headed into the summer season, we obviously see a lot more people in the park and just kind of sharing what happened last year at, at this time last year, we had decided we, you know, with city ordinance, dogs need to be on leash in the roads. We, we need to have dogs in leash in the parking lot. And we didn't really implement it because we were waiting for this final piece of like, what else? And in that time of not implementing, there was a um, family visiting the park and their three-year-old daughter was bit by a dog in the parking lot. And they reached out to us and said, why don't you require dogs to be leashed in parking lots? And, you know, as a commission, it's like, we almost did, you know, and, and, and it feels for us like it's hard to go into another um, summer season with like almost doing something um, with that kind of, um, you know, with, with that on our hands. So um, that kind of creates kind of some reasoning about, you know, trying to implement this before we head into the summer season. Um, I think we've heard the 2 to 4 p.m. an entire park, south leashed, north unleashed from Alec. South off leash in the morning, soft south on leash in the afternoon, or vice versa, and then off leash in the north at all times. I think was what Emily was um, just sharing. Um, I think for me, I think similar to the other commissioners, um, I I see where the two to four p.m. hours come from, but it's also really hard to think that that is is really adequately going to uh, kind of solve the problem and, and accommodate these people who um, are not visiting our parks and right now or don't feel like they can be there very frequently um, with just that two hour time slot. Um, so I that's that to me, I see a lot of the reasoning to, behind it, but I don't think that's um, really feels like where it's, you know, meeting the needs of, of everybody in the community. Um, so these other two options feel, I'm feeling more kind of momentum behind them and, and based on everything that we've heard, feel like they, one of those, um, could potentially work. Um, it's seven 30 now. Um, I want to pause for a second to see if commissioners have anything else to share or else my thought was to turn back to, to public comment. Mm -hmm. And we already heard from all of you on like the two to 4 PM thing, we, we already heard that piece. Um, so I think specifically it would be, uh, we'd love to hear from you all on these ideas of South Leashed, North Unleashed, South Leashed Half, Unleashed Half, North Unleashed. Um, and maybe somebody can drop those into the, or I'll drop those into the comments. I have them typed here. Um, they're not eloquent, but I'll drop them in so people can think about um, what they mean. Um, and anything else from commissioners before I turn it over? It, it'd be great to just throw in there if people are brainstorming or have creative ideas about assessment yeah. and evaluation. I'd love to hear those ideas with other recommendations. Great. Um, uh, Will, William. Uh, yes, I wanted to ask Alec, where, as a practical matter, where would you actually put in Put the signs for uh, the north part of the park 
requiring, uh, I mean, allowing off leash. Yeah, so those two parts of the park are basically separated, um, connected with three different trails. The first one is the short and steep trail. Um, the second one is the seven fireplaces road. And then the third one is the Hemlock Hill trail. Um, and right where, you know, those trails are closest is this narrowest, skinniest part of the park. Um, and so you would basically put a draw a line on a map and put a sign at each of those three trails saying, if you're crossing this point, you know, your dog, if you're going this way, your dog is on a leash. If you're going that way, your dog is off leash and following the canine code of conduct. And I hope that's, uh, yeah, you know, I hope this concept isn't a surprise or new to people. I mean, I, I know we talked about this idea in the management plan and we, we divvied up the park by zone. So I know not everybody is <laughs> deeply entrenched in the parks commission as the commissioners and, and me, but um, hopefully at least to the commissioners, that concept isn't, isn't new. And it certainly, uh, Emily's work uh, certainly helped the development of my ideas this week. Yeah, I, I'm still slightly confused, but uh, I get a general idea of what you mean. Yeah, is, is there is there a way I can clear up the confusion? What you mean uh, before the fi seven fireplaces? Uh, just the, the road, basically right here by the park office, like right where- Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. Right, right there, right by the park office, right where that seven fireplaces road begins would basically be, you know, that that's the entry to the northern part of the park. Okay, great. And there's two other side trails that are right next to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Rachel. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I just wanted to you? make a, oh, no, this is Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Great. Go ahead. Rachel Stevens, yeah, I commented earlier. I just wanna make a plug for public process and strongly encourage the Park Commission to delay a vote. Um, the only recommendation that was provided in terms of advance notice was the dog committee, which did a great job of providing a summary of all the survey results and all the feedback, recommendations that were clearly reasoned and had a lot of information in them. And there's two new kind of proposals on the table. And I just don't think that the public can adequately weigh in on the new recommendations for or against without more information about what's feasible, how it informs the, you know, how it's informed from the survey results and additional process. We also heard from dog commissioners that um, from dog committee members that there were issues with the survey data itself. And so I just wanna make a plug for process, recommend that the the dog committee or the park commission delay a vote at least for one additional meeting. Um, because I think if you make a decision, for example, to split the park in half by time or by geographic area without putting that recommendation on public notice, you're gonna get severe public opposition. Whereas what the dog committee did, uh, which is different, was that they were transparent about the recommendations in advance. They provided a lot of information for the public to absorb. And as you heard from earlier, both proponents of off-leash and on-leash found it was reasonable because they got information about what was the recommendation and the reasoning, and we can all absorb that and consider that and agree that that makes sense. So if you actually wanna please both off-leash and on-leash members of the public, you need to provide a process where we can understand the reasoning. And if it was just the commission today to vote on one of the alternatives without more process, I think you're gonna have strong opposition. Whereas there may be a room to reach consensus if you were able to do additional process. So I'm gonna strongly recommend that there's not an action vote tonight and that you write up the recommendations that came forward at the very last minute. Alec himself acknowledged that he just sprung that you know, and, and even a commissioner that spoke to him an hour before hadn't heard that he was going to propose splitting the park geographically. Give folks an opportunity to think about it, understand the reasoning, and we can come, like, everybody here wants what's best for the community. No one's going to try to grandstand, but I think Rachel, you need to consider we, process. I think we've, we've got it. We heard that. Um, that's great. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, I just, it's starting to get late. So I just want to um, make sure. I understand there wasn't time for the public to consider this in advance. And this is what happens when you spring things on people. I, so I'm sorry, um, that's how it, that's how it happens. 
No, no, that's great. It's a great, it's a great point. Great comment. I, I just want to move on to an, an additional idea and, and see, hear from others in the group. Um, I think I, it's absolutely great. Um, let's see, Justin, I think your hand was up next. Is there another idea you said you were going to propose? No, 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 no. I just wanted to hear from, uh, it's getting to be quarter of eight and, and I just want to make sure we hear from others who have their hands up. Um, yeah, I, I, I said two um, minutes and that was longer than two minutes. So I just, well, I know I'm also worried about the time too. And I think that's part of the, the issue now is that there are these new proposals that weren't, um, uh, we weren't prepared for. So I'm sort of on my heels as well about how to respond to this, um, okay. But I do want to respond to the, the substance of it now because it sounds like uh, that's going to go forward. And first, I, I do want to address the statistics that were, were cited earlier because maybe I'm not clear. Um, the number of people that said that they found the regulations not sufficient, I know that was 46%. And so that was cited as a majority. And I agree. And I want to be clear, I'm in the 46% of saying I don't think there's sufficient ease or either as an off-leash dog proponent because we have a very well-behaved trained dog that has voice control and we're worried about other dogs that are not so we're in that 46 percent. so it's not so black and white that there is just pro-dog anti-dog so we have to be clear about that um, I also heard I think maybe Lincoln cited 350 people but when I'm looking at the survey results uh, the number was 246 people or 46 percent who said that they did not want to interact with off-leash dogs um, but more to the point is we're talking about the the dogs that really have the worst outcomes for people and that's horrible and so we need a simple solution another very simple solution is the dog has to be, uh, be like a certified canine good citizen that means that the dog will not be reactive everyone can wear that blue ribbon and it's a privilege to be in the park with an off-leash dog so we can have a very simple system uh, we can create that system and we can you know we talked about licensing yeah. so anyone who wants to bring their off-leash dog in the park has to have a certified trained dog uh, that will take care of the entire issue. At least we could start there. Um, and as far as the the geographic zones, I'm I'm extremely worried about that. Uh, looking at the map, and I know the park very well, so I know these areas. One of the main reasons we enjoy the park and live in Montpelier is so that we don't have to start a car. So we're talking about how am I supposed to walk up Core Street, walk up Winter Street, and then walk our dog leashed all the way to the back of the the park? I mean, we're really talking about we we call it south and north that's not those aren't really aren't equal terms um it's really the main park and then all of the sort of back section that's highly inaccessible to get there you, we'd have to cross 15 20 minutes worth of trails just to get there on a leash so i don't think this is workable i don't want to ramble on anymore and i think that's why we need time to digest this and come up with another way to really delve into this to solve the problem so thank Great. you thanks justin um jessa i see your hand up Thanks. I do want to weigh in, and I'll be doing this as an individual, not on behalf of the dog committee, because um, as a committee, we didn't have a chance to discuss this recommendation. I will just say that um, we know the tower trail is what everybody really wants access to and uses, and that that, and just to kind of follow up on what Justin said, that really is um, the core of the park, where it's accessible to most of the entrances, a lot of the neighborhoods where people can walk in directly. Um, it's also significantly greater than the initial Park Commission draft proposal back last December in the draft management plan, which was just the tower trail and the accessible trail. Um, and that itself got a lot of opposition, which is kind of what led to or concern, which led to this committee. So um, I, I think it would leave, la it if there was not an hour component as well that gave everybody some access to that core of the park, I think there would be a lot of extremely disappointed um, current um, frequent users of the park. And as Justin said, um, people who walk in daily from their house, from their backyard and um, want to take a quick 10, 15 minute walk with their dog um, in that section of the park and could not cross half the park to get there. So, um, you know, if this is the direction the commission is really um, set on going and going tonight, I would certainly be more in favor of um, splitting the time in that core area than entirely having it um, on or off leash. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jessa. Any other thoughts? All right. Um, let's turn um, back to commissioners. We have these few ideas on the table. I'm um, and we heard um, Rachel 
clearly, you know, and I, I, I'm sure lots of people were home giving thumbs up and applause as well to like, hey, let's not make a decision tonight. Um, and just want to check in to see how people are feeling, what, um, and let's figure out next steps and a path forward. Um, are we ready to make a decision tonight? Is one of these really super rising to the top for you? Um, do we want to take more time? Um, and um, so, you know, give obviously everybody a chance to email us or whatnot and weigh in again. Um, what do what does everybody see as a good path forward here? Yeah, I don't think we should hold a vote tonight, <laughs> personally. Um, I do think there has been more public process behind this than people might realize. Um, we did do a whole public outreach campaign when we were putting together the pub the management plan over a year ago. We held community walks where we talked about this issue. Um, we put out a draft management plan with a proposal. We heard community feedback. The community feedback was largely not this isn't right, it was, you don't have enough information to make this recommendation. You need more data, you need a little bit more time. And that's why this dog committee was put in place. They put out a survey that was more directly related to the dog issue. We have more information now that does tell us this is actually a bigger issue than we thought it was. Um, so knowing that, um, I would suggest we either hold a special meeting in a week, um, or a few days, but I don't think we should make a decision tonight. The I... survey says 138 people won't go to the park because of dogs. So that doesn't sound like it's a bigger issue than we thought it was. Um, Emily, were you going to say something? Yeah. I was just going to say, I, I agree with Steph that it might be worth just waiting even a few days um, for everyone to chew on these ideas. Um, I also think that it's hard to break down like, oh, just a couple hundred people here, a couple hundred people there. Like, yes, that's true. But like in terms of looking at the responses to the survey that we got, it's almost an even split. So it's also like, Yes, we got a lot of blowback when we first suggested like some certain trails on leash in Hubbard because everybody loves the fact that it's off leash. But um, it's also, you know, we're trying to make a compromise that will satisfy both sides that are clearly at different extremes. And um, so kind of like Alec what said, it's like the decision that we reach is probably not going to be. <laughs> not going to make anybody happy, but it hopefully will be the best decision for the community. And a family, if I could please just add that I don't think it is a both sides. I don't think there's an extreme because I'm actually in the camp that doesn't like how the current system is working. There are a lot of responsible dog owners that like, like me and my wife that don't like how the system is working because there are too many reactive dogs, too many dogs that aren't following the proper canine. So there's actually three of us. There's a Venn diagram of the three sides. I don't want this to turn into what feels like an extreme of pro-dog, anti-dog, because it's not. It's really responsible use of the park. Uh, so it's a little more nuanced. I want to make, make sure that that's clear and heard. Yeah, I, I can see postponing. I, I don't love that idea. I could see postponing for a couple of days, a week at absolute max. I'm not comfortable with not doing something for this field season. I wouldn't support no action. Um, you know, I, I, I'm hearing a lot about access and we are talking about limiting use, but we're not talking, we're talking about increasing access. We're not talking about limiting access for anybody. That's not what, what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to increase exit access. And that does mean balancing multiple uses. Um, you know, I think the other thing is that we're not going to be able to reach a consensus and it would be great if we could. And I think you know, more time and more input and being patient is, is virtuous. And, um, you know, I'm, I think we've been doing that and I think we can give it, you know, if, if tonight is, it's just feeling too hot and we need to, need to sleep on it. I, you know, I can respect that. 
but I feel as a commissioner more informed than I ever have about this issue. And I think although, and I appreciate the statistics that I, I miscited were corrected, I think the trends from this survey and past surveys are just becoming clearer and clearer. And, and we have to do something and it is it is divided and it's whatever we do is there are gonna be people who are gonna be upset and hopefully there are gonna be people who are in the park who weren't before. And, you know, we can, if it, if it means another meeting, then, you know, we should do that. So we have the time, but we do, we do need to do something this field season for everything that we've talked about. I'm not comfortable waiting another, another year or much more than tonight. Thanks Lincoln. Um, I'm going to close this out here in a second, I think. Um, but Dana, I see your hand and want to give you a chance to, to speak up first. Thank you. Um, I have a thought that is is not like from the dog committee as a whole. It's just for me. I hope that that's an okay thing to drop in. I'm a, one of the slightly more introverted people who like missed your last window. Um, I really appreciating all of the nuance and complexity in the conversation tonight. And the thing I keep coming back to that I really appreciate Kara speaking to earlier is this frame of accessibility. Um, and I think for true accessibility, we need to be thinking about everyone's needs and we need to be focusing on the people for whom harm is being done to them and not just like people for whom the park is a nice time. Um, I'm thinking about the frame of accessibility in the larger world and about prejudice and how, you know, we need to be paying attention to the voices of folks who are in the minority and not people who are in necessarily the position of privileged power here. Um, and as a dog owner, like I'm a dog owner, I walk my dog off leash in Humber Park all the time. It would be a bummer if I didn't get to walk my dog as much, but I think other people are like gaining a whole park <laughs> and gaining not being bitten. Um, and I feel like I'm not being as eloquent with this as I was in my mind, but I just really encourage everyone in this conversation to think about this frame of balance and accessibility for everyone. And I really heard a strong voice for, for half and half and whether that's time or trails. Mm -hmm. So I'm holding that, I guess, in my... Um, taking away from this is like, what does true accessibility look like? What are all the voices of Montpelier, not just the ones in this meeting, who are the people who who were afraid to serve on this dog committee for heaven's sake? Like, um, and I think I think I really want to be taking not just like, oh, this is a nice choice for me as a dog owner, but like, who are the people who we are not serving, who we could be serving? And I just want to really, I urge everybody to focus on. That. Awesome. Dana, you just closed us out. That's what we needed. <laughs> um, beautifully said. Um, I, um, yes, I don't, it does not feel like we're ready to like call a vote and make some kind of decision here. Um, I, I do think Lincoln, you know, we are, we are more and more informed and, you know, this has been a long time. This isn't just like a meeting where we came up with this or whatever. Um, and so, um, it, it feels like we're, uh, you know, headed in the right direction. Um, with making some kind of decision here. And um, in terms of logistics, um, could somebody who knows open meeting laws way better than I do, tell me when we could next meet at our earliest convenience? The Can way we I meet understand 48 it, hours? Can yeah, we meet is it 48 for a special meeting? Yeah. Um, which would, so could we meet Thursday at 6 p.m.? Um, I think we'd have to have the meeting materials out yeah, for 48 I, I hours, right. yeah. so I, I don't I think. I, I recommend a week. Can we meet a week from tonight? Um, we certainly could. I'll just, full disclosure, I will not be here, which is not the end of the world. But I will just say something I really appreciate about this commission is that when we've had hard decisions, we make sure like we're all there. Um, okay. I'm okay with not being there. I can pass well, ideas along to others, but I just, um, I won't be there. I almost recommended Monday, but I don't think anybody's going to be around on Monday. <laughs> also, 3 p.m. Monday. Meeting. Anybody have plans? <laughs> a special meeting only requires 24 hours, just FYI. Yeah. 24 hours notice for a special meeting. So if we got meeting materials up tomorrow, we would be in compliance for a Thursday meeting. Correct. 
or if we got them up right now, we could be in compliance for 8 p.m. tomorrow. But I don't think we should do that. I like. Uh, Seems like you're aiming for compliance and not actual input and consensus from the community. This is really concerning from a public process. Let's not do the minimum if you're making decisions that are going to impact a lot of people that feel passionately. Take the time. Do the process the right way. Give it space. That's, that's, I mean, I know I'm just one voice, but I feel really strongly that you should trust the process, give it space, don't try to push something through that then is just going to get, like, what's the next step? You get opposition because you didn't, you weren't transparent, and then you're at a city council meeting trying to defend a decision that people are upset about. Give it a little extra time, and I think you can reach agreement. I'm telling you that as someone that feels strongly about it. I think you can win over both sides. The dog committee did a great job. They found a solution. They can, we can work through and make adjustments based on the feedback from the commission. Let's do that. Let's, let's actually make this a productive process. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. Um, so um, we can, our options now, um, similar to what I did with the dog, you know, the options in the park, our options are to meet in the next couple of days and people could reach out to us. We could make a decision in the next couple of days. Um, we could, and we would all be there. Um, and Alec would be able to, and staff begin implementation of whatever is decided, um, and have space to do that prior to the field season. We could meet one or two or three weeks after that. Um, that gives, the you know public longer period of time to weigh in, provide feedback. We may not all be here. That's not the end of the world. Um, and it shortens the implementation time. Um, maybe logistics wise, I'm curious, Alec, um, I know, um, I think you were hoping to get this started with implementation, you know, by now in April. Um, what does that look like for you if implementation is not happening for say like another one, two, three weeks. Or Kara, I see your hand. You probably can answer that question. Right, and Alec definitely can weigh in. Um, I think, well, one thing I think it's important to note that this isn't all just happening tonight. That I think it has been mentioned before, but this has been a process going on for years um, with a lot of time for public comment. So, and I do personally believe as a staff member that, you know, there was a reason that we had the deadlines that we had and we did have to push it out further because of the flood and various other reasons. But our field season is like, we're just right, right on the edge there. And we really need to get this done before it starts and to get a lot of um, public outreach done ahead of time. It's not like we're just going to put up the signs one day and start it all. There's going to be you know, at least weeks of public outreach where we're informing people about the new policy. So there'll be time um, for people to get used to it before it actually starts and all the signage. And I feel like pushing it out isn't going to change anything. Um, ultimately, I, I think it may give people time to you know, maybe rally more support for their causes, but it's not going to change anything about the core of what we're discussing and what's been discussed over the last several years. Thanks, Kara. Um, all right, Emily, you were yeah. gonna say something. Sorry. Um, I am wondering whether there might be, like, if we talk to the canine committee and say these are the two or three options we are looking at um, and ask them to reconsider by whatever date we're gonna meet on and then really try to make a decision on that date if that might make people feel better about the public process aspect um, this. Um, okay. Um... So we can move, to, we could move to, I'm hearing move to dog committee conversation, come back. We're going to need obviously more time for that. That'll push back the logistics. Um, and what's, what do other people want to do? Commissioners?
do you all want to meet? I, I'd rather that we met sooner with everybody versus later without Kasha or later with putting um, implementation for this season at risk. Is there some space where it's not a lot more time, but if we met like midday or something on Friday where it would allow, um, we've got Orca here, there's probably going to be something on the front page of the bridge, I'm sure, um, and um, get get more word out there and give people a little more time to provide feedback on these specific options. I can't do Friday. Okay. Yeah, I think we're look. I mean, I I think we're, we're looking at we're looking at next week. Okay. It feels like um, that, that would be without Kasha. Then. Are you gone all week, Kasha? Sure am. But that's okay. It's not. You know, it's we don't need. We have a quorum. Without me, it's not the end of the world. It's just um, we tend to do hard things together. But that we don't have to. It's okay. When, when do you come back? Um. I'll tell you off the record. Sounds good. <laughs> Feels awkward. So, yeah. So maybe we're moving to a scheduling meeting dance now. Um, okay. We will, we don't need to be laborless. Let's, um, we will figure out a, a time in the next one week. Let's look at next week. Um, to have the Parks Commission meeting. It will not be with me. In the meantime, there can be conversation in the dog committee. Um, there cannot be conversation among parks commissioners because we have a quorum of three people. And if we get more than two people together, um, we're, we're above our quorum. So um, that's one of the reasons why some of these things like feel like surprises to everybody. It's like we can't actually talk without having a, a public meeting like this. So um, Let's meet in a week. Um, we'll figure out a time for that. Um, and in the meantime, we can, you know, our email is available. We're available one-on-one. -on -one. Um, anybody can reach out to us at all times and continue the conversation. Um, and what I think is really wonderful is that this, I, you know, it feels like a really like open dialogue kind of conversation. I think many people um, shared um, some vulnerable moments tonight, some courageous moments, um, some passion, and just really appreciate that from everybody in the community. Um, and if we are in a pickle, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to figure out and figure out a path forward. Um, and I also just, I think um, everybody opened their comments tonight with saying thank you to the dog committee. Um, and I want to just close and by saying that again. Um, I think I was um, talking with Robin earlier today and I said this to you, but you, no matter what happens in the path forward, um, the work that you all have put in will make a better outcome. So it, you know, like if it's not exactly the recommendation that you all put forward, if it's not like word for word or whatever, um, the survey, the conversations, the hard work that you all have done will, will make something better for our, our entire community. Um, so just want to recognize that and appreciate that. Um, and no matter where this goes from here, um, I was about to close out, but Dana, I see your hand up and I want to give you a one a chance to. Yeah, this is just a process question. What would you like the role of the dog committee to be in the next week? Like, um, there's another meeting happening. Is it just commissioners from here on out? Do you want us to meet? Like, please tell us what you would like us to do. <laughs> And we may or may not be able to do it. Like, to be clear, like we scheduled a bunch of meetings. We planned on this date. I don't know what people's availability is in the next week, but I would like to know what your expectation of us is and the rest of this process. Yeah, I think um, that's a fantastic question. I will let other commissioners answer this too, if you have ideas. I would say um, it's helpful to like, all of this was new, right? Like thinking about like, wait, this could be a different way or, you know, like what else could this look like? Um, so I think maybe taking this conversation back either to yourself, I'll leave it up to you, like either to yourselves or if you want to meet as this group again and say, like, how did this all, how does this all land? Like, how does this sound? Um, and, you know, I'm planning to go out on the trails and talk to people in the park and who I don't know and just say, hey, what do you think of this? Here's what we're thinking. 
and just kind of casually, you know, vet options and bring people into the process. Um, and just hear people's feedback, I think is helpful um, that you may want to bring back to us. All of our meetings are open to the public. So you all should plan to come to our next meeting and um, and and all of that. Um, other, like what, what do others think in terms of specific like actions or process for the dog committee? Does that seem? I feel like as we we kind of created the dog committee as representatives of the community, so it might be nice if they could even by email just like kind of think about whether they have preferences in terms of the options we came up with tonight and email us or come to the meeting if they can, but weigh in on it at least. Fine. That's what you get. Yeah, it would also be great to know, you know, who, if anyone, would be interested in, you know, I think Andrew threw the idea out there about maintaining some level of relationship with whatever is the next step of the dog committee for implementation, helping park staff. Uh, this is just really phase one of whatever happens, and you know, it might be contingent on what happens, and you know, that's that's totally fine. But if you, you know, you know, you are interested or something, I think that'd be helpful for us when we think about mobilization to figure out a way way to implement. Great. Dana, does that somewhat answer your question? Helpful? It sounds like you're kind of leaving it up to us. At like it would be an acceptable thing for us to just show up as individuals to next week's meeting and not have any further comments. But uh, if we had time and energy to meet as a group and have a, a group consensus reaction to the proposals, that would be even more better. That sounds great. Um, I, yeah, I have a suggestion. Um, you know, I think when you guys were coming up with your proposal, you believed that, you know, a trail based proposal wouldn't work. So if it looks like we're going down the path of like a zone based proposal, I would love if you guys could think about what are our barriers for implementing that and how can we make that a successful, um, you know, proposal, yeah. how we can actually make that work. That's great. Thanks, it's, Stephanie. It's also helpful to hear you say that the commissioners can't meet all together unless it's a public meeting. Um, I was hoping that after this process, we could have a moment to have a debrief with the yes. dog committee and the commission no, no. about the process and what went well and what didn't, just as a process piece for learning. Um, and it sounds like that would have to be a public meeting if it was, which I'm open to doing. But I just want to put that out there that like we have struggled with the process in some ways and would love to be in dialogue with you and offer feedback on that. And um, if there's a way to do that, please let us know. We have we have process thoughts as well as dog thoughts. No, that's fantastic. And you can share any of that with any of us individually or with two of us. If you want more than us, more than two of us, then it's a, a pub, you know, open public meeting, posted, warned, all of those things, um, which is great. Usually we don't get so many people coming to our meetings. It's often just us five. So this is a very exciting night for us. Um, great. I think we have a little bit of a plan here. Um, I would love for all of you to bring these thoughts back into your communities, your workplaces, your friends, your neighbors, and just explore with them like, hey, what would this look like? What do you think of this? Um, and I think maybe to Dana's comments earlier, thinking about like, not just what like what this means to me, like how this would affect my daily routine or whatnot, but um, how does this impact our community and who does this open access to and who are we supporting collectively and how do we do that in the best way? Because that's really what we're trying to do here and um, while also retaining a lot of the things that we just absolutely love about our parks, um, which is where we started. So um, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for um, giving a couple hours of your week to us. Um, stay involved, really appreciate it. And um, we'll connect again in about a week. Thanks, everybody.